Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. Now this video is one that I have done in the past and it's all about revitalizing your old potting soil. Now contrary to popular belief, you can reuse potting soil. I've outlined in my peat moss video as well as my coconut choir video that there is some sort of an environmental effect to gardening especially when we're using soil less mediums such as a peat moss or a coconut choir so both materials you can reuse now a common commentary on reusing potting soil will come from bigger gardening influencers such as laura from garden answers or kevin from epic gardening where they will tell you not to reuse your potting soil but rather use a high quality potting soil every single year and while there is nothing wrong with that not all of us have the bank accounts to do so or we may just be more environmentally conscious where we want to reuse as much as possible the reason for why some influencers or some gardeners may encourage you to just purchase a high quality potting soil year after year is because peat moss due to its organic nature does break down over time that breakdown is completely normal but what can happen is if it degrades too much it may become too acidic it can become anaerobic if it's not dealt with properly or in some cases it actually may harbor disease um, whether that be bacterial fungal or pests so let's go through what we need to do to ensure we don't run into disease issues we don't run into anaerobic conditions and ultimately how a reused potting soil may be more valuable to you depending on what you're trying to achieve I'm not going to be going into specific potting soil mixes based on what type of plant you're growing. If you want a video on that or you want a resource on that, then I encourage you to check out the gardeningincanada.net website where I actually have an entire Google Sheets uh, that goes through all the different components you should put into a potting soil based on your watering type, how much light the plant is getting, your pot, everything. It's very, very detailed. Um, I'm sure some subscribers have seen it and know exactly what I'm talking about. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna empty it into some sort of container. So what I like to do is I like to use this swimming pool, for example. Um, and as you can see, I've dumped out all my pots and I just kind of have clumps of dirt everywhere. Now. You can see all my empty pots behind me. I'll show you a little bit later on in the video what to do with your larger size pots and how in some cases you can actually leave your potting soil in situ and how to deal with it in that manner. Now, depending on how dry your potting soil is, you may want to pre-wet this in hopes of um, bringing down that dust level. But step one in this entire process is breaking up these large clumps that may exist in here and powdering them into a fine dust and then also removing any kinds of twigs and sticks. Now this isn't necessary to remove sticks and twigs. If you're comfortable leaving them in place then you can do so. It will help with microbes and it actually over time will decay leaving some air pockets in the actual potting soil itself as well as naturally because this is dead decayed matter it will have some porosity in it which will allow for some air exchange but if you don't like the look of it then throw it in the compost bin and get it ready to be composted <laughs> Okay, so we are finally done. And as you can see, it looks like basically brand new potting soil. The exception being that we do have some leaves in here from trees, but honestly, that's actually a good thing. It's just gonna help stabilize and make a better microbiome. So the first thing we wanna analyze after we have our soil declumped and delittered is we actually just wanna give it a sniff and it should smell like earth. If you are smelling anything sewage, manure, or kind of rotten, then your potting soil most likely has turned anaerobic and you will need to add a whole new bag of peat moss, just straight peat moss, probably add in some perlite or pumice for aeration, and then also a compost or manure. But if it smells, it means it's too highly degraded. So you either need to start over from scratch or you need to do some serious reclamation on it with a 
bale of peat moss or whatever the case is. But if you smell earth, which is exactly what this smells like, you are in good shape. Another way of identifying whether or not your soil for potting soil is healthy is actually taking some soil, putting it in the palm of your hand, putting a couple drops of water in it, and then seeing if you are getting a slurry, so kind of a milky film that is brown, or if you're actually able to identify individual particles within that potting medium. If you can see strands and fibers, that again means that your soil isn't too heavily degraded. So here I have an entire swimming pool and you can see quite a bit of perlite just on the surface. This would be adequate enough for an outdoor potting system. Now, if you are in a cloth pot, for example, you may be able to actually pull back on the perlite and pumice because you can get away due to just the natural airflow in a fabric pot you have the ability to get away with a bit less pumice or perlite. Now, if you're in a plastic or a ceramic container, then you may wanna add perlite or pumice to the mix. Keep in mind, you if you're a beginner gardener, you're not gonna have a good grasp on what your watering style is, how often you wanna water, what your parenting, plant parenting style is. So go with something in between this is a healthy mix if you notice that you tend to overwater, then you may want to add more pumice or perlite to the mix based on the pots that you have chosen or if you're an underwaterer you may want to pull back on the pumice and perlite meaning you may need to add more compost or manure or some more peat moss into the mix but overall this is kind of what it should look like now this is over full typically i like to work with half of a swimming container but if you're working with a full one, such as I am, you're going to want to add two bags of composted manure or compost, garden compost. So that comes out to about 12.5 kilograms weight wise. And all you're going to do is you're literally just going to spread this on top. Okay, so the manure is finally incorporated into probably the top portion of this. I will, as I work my way down, probably add more when I get lower into the profile. But the honest to goodness truth with any organic fertilizer or amendment for soil is that it will not release nutrients or it will not provide nutrients to your plants unless your soil is alive and healthy, meaning you have microbes. So if you've chosen to sterilize your soil or if you've chosen underwater or mistreated and actually harm your microbe activity then you won't have as much nutrient exchange and therefore nothing nutrients for your plant so your safety net when doing a potting soil is to use a granular slow release fertilizer such as the miracle grow on the far side there now you don't have to go that route you can use organic and inorganic fertilizers in conjunction i'll be doing a separate video on that as a special request from one of the subscribers but all in all if you choose to use organic material in your soilless mediums in a container garden you need to provide a few things and the big one being water so do not let your pots dry out too too much you always want to keep it relatively moist and you want to harness the power of microbes so use a diverse profile of different forms of organic material so in this we have the peat moss we have the composted manure and the year before in this batch i had compost from the city mixed in as well as composted cow manure from a different brand so you can see all the diversity going into this but this is completed if i was to put a heavy feeder into the container such as a pepper or a tomato i would actually mix this into the pot itself not so much into the mix here or if i had flowers i would mix it in but for things like lettuce herbs i wouldn't put the miracle grow slow release granular in i would just leave it so i'm going to set this aside for right now i'm not going to incorporate it into this because i don't know what i'm planting when but overall this is completed now let's head over to some larger containers and look at how we would deal with those without dumping them out all over the ground so here's a container that i will not be unpacking and putting out all over the yard 
for a lot of people, this is a reality, whether that be to a physical disability or just simply the fact that they do not have space. Revitalizing a potting soil that you can't just simply dump out and add a bunch of stuff to is the reality. So while this container isn't huge, I do have some larger containers that I do do this with, especially the cement ones that I personally cannot lift into the backyard. They stay in the front yard and I've been reusing that potting soil over and over and over again. So what you're gonna wanna do first off is you're gonna wanna take into medium such as the raised beds behind me for it to compact over time and therefore you get a little bit of shrinkage. The biggest thing is that you want to ensure you don't cause any more compaction when you're actually utilizing this well. So we have currently roots running through this entire potting soil and year after year those roots decompose, leaving little tunnels in which air can be delivered to our root system. So we want to try to reduce the disruption of that as much as possible. And the best way to do that is actually by simply just tugging out these sticks rather than digging in and really pulling. If you have used a pumice rather than a perlite in your potting soil, that's gonna be a big factor too. Pumice is going to hold its structure and it won't compact or disintegrate over time, more so because it is an actual rock. It isn't an expanded um, element that has been put under heat. I've done videos on both pumice and perlite, the difference between the two. So you're just gonna to wanna to give everything a little tug leaving a vast majority of the roots in place. So I'm just gonna quickly clean this up. Okay, so now that this is all cleaned up, we've removed some of those stems. It is ready to do the sniff test. So we're gonna do the exact same thing, get our nose nice and close to the soil and make sure it doesn't smell rancid. Now, the exception to using it in situ with the pot is if it does smell rancid, you will have to replace the potting soil entirely. There's simply not enough room to do this in situ where you would add fresh peat moss. If you have the ability to dump it out somewhere and add some new stuff in, then please do so. But overall, you would need to give it a hock. Now, you have a bit of sponginess to it and you just wanna give it a nice light um, feel. If you, it feels like a sponge and you feel a little bit of oomph, then that is a good sign and it means that it is not fully compacted. If you touch it and it feels almost like a rock, then you may need to go in and just loosen it up a tiny bit. Now, obviously, because this is in a container, we can't add manure or compost. If you've watched any of my videos in the past, you will know that compost and manures generally out of the bag are hydro Phobic. And that means you will end up with pooling of water and improper water penetration throughout the entire soil profile unless it's incorporated into the potting soil, such as what we did over with the swimming pool. So because of that, there is a product that you can use called Earth Medicine Fertilizer. I'll leave a discount code down below for this. I don't get any kickback for it, but it is a great product. And all it is, is it is composted manure that is put into a pelletized form. Meaning we don't have to worry as much about hydrophobicity because this is more of a slow release. So I've done an entire video on the product. Go check that out if you need more information, but this is essentially all it is. And I'm just gonna give it a sprinkle on top. Now, I have just a, a thin layer over the entire area and you can take your fingers and incorporate it just a little bit if you like. When you go to also dig or plant your potted plants in here, you're obviously going to incorporate some deeper into the profile once you actually take a shovel to it and start planting some plants up. So that is completed. So now you're probably thinking to yourself, okay, so we've looked at how to revitalize potting soil both in pot and then inside of a swimming pool. We've learned how to add nutrients, whether that be inorganic or organic, how to increase our microbes in our soil through a wide range of biodiversity and organic material. But we haven't touched on how to prevent pests. And this is a very serious issue. Now, one prevention method is not reusing the potting soil from pots that may have had things such as powdery mildew. So items or foliage that overwinters inside of 
the actual debris should be removed in the fall and should not be incorporated into your potting soil mix. That also goes for the soil itself. Now, this isn't the rule. This is the exception and powdery mildew being one that I just would not play around with and I would simply dispose of the top portion at least of that soil, but for sure the plant debris, you honestly can't even compost it because it is so pervasive. However, a lot of bacteria, a lot of pests such as thrips, slugs, ants, all that fun stuff can be taken care of with predatory nematodes. So the ones I have here are for fungus gnats, thrips, ants, and all that fun stuff. I did a whole video on this. It, they all work in the same method. However, you can add this to your potting soil mix and just add it right into the pool or add it into the specific pot that you're dealing with or you can add things like a diatomaceous earth to the soil, which will help out. Um, and then there are other beneficial microbes or organisms you can add, such as predatory spider mites, things of that nature.